Okay, um, hi everyone. My name is Libby Walsh and I did my project on how a high protein intake affects diabetes susceptibility. So my research question for this project was, can a high protein diet reduce an individual's genetic susceptibility for developing type two diabetes? So what constitutes a high protein diet? The World Health Organization has determined that a protein intake of 0.8 to 0.83 grams of protein per kilogram per day is sufficient to establish nitrogen balance in most individuals. And a protein intake of 1.4 to 2.0 grams per kilogram body weight a day is thought to be sufficient to meet the needs for most exercising individuals. Um, so it is important to note that what constitutes a high protein diet is going to be different for every individual. There's a lot of factors that are going to affect how much is going to be considered high protein for you. It depends on how much you're eating in general, how much protein you eat normally, how much you're exercising, your body composition, and so on. So these numbers are a range. Um, but it's not a one-size-fits-all type of approach here. And then a protein intake higher than these numbers that I've given you has been shown to provide metabolic advantages, especially for those who are overweight or obese that are attempting to lose weight. And so what are the advantages of a high-protein diet? Um, these can include the sparing of lean body mass when you're experiencing weight loss, the promotion of weight management, as well as the enhancement of glycemic regulation. And then I have a diagram to the right on the screen that gives a list of some high protein foods. Um, so as we can see, the foods that have the highest um, grams of protein per 100 grams tend to be animal products like minced beef, chicken breast, salmon, eggs, and so on. As you go down, you can also find plant-based sources like nuts and quinoa and other types of sources. So how are high-protein diets beneficial? So the essential amino acid protein or the essential amino acid profiles of proteins are responsible for a robust, rapid, and sustained delivery of the amino acids to the periphery. And also, higher protein diets um, provide metabolic advantages when the proteins can be rapidly digested and absorbed for use. Um, and also, high protein diets um, can result in protein induced alterations in gluconeogenesis um, to improve glucose homeostasis. So, on the right, I have another diagram, and this just gives um, the other essential functions that proteins serve in the body. So, Proteins can serve as digestive enzymes, which will help facilitate chemical reactions. Um, they support the regulation and expression of both DNA and RNA. Um, proteins can serve as antibodies, which support our immune function. Proteins can provide support to the body. They can move essential molecules around the body. Um, they can act as hormones to help coordinate bodily functions, and then obviously proteins support muscle contraction and movement. So type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is one of the most common metabolic disorders currently, and it affects around 17 million people in the United States. Type 2 diabetes results when the beta cells of the pancreas um, secrete more insulin, to compensate for reduced sensitivity, which is known as compromised immune sensitivity or compromised insulin sensitivity. And this leads to eventual beta cell failure. Um, so a lot of people confuse type one diabetes with type two diabetes. So type one diabetes is actually an autoimmune disorder um, where the body just has no ability to produce insulin. While type two diabetes results when the body either does not produce or use insulin well. And type 2 diabetes is usually the one that's developed um, as you get older, whereas type 1 diabetes 
it's you're either going to be born with it or you're going to it's going to manifest very early on in your life. So the risk factors for type 2 diabetes include an age of 45 or older, if you have family history of diabetes, if you're overweight or obese, if you have high triglycerides, if you have low HDL levels, um, and HDL is considered our good cholesterol, or if you have high blood pressure. And then the long-term effects of type 2 diabetes include, again, increased triglycerides, higher LDL levels, which are the bad cholesterol. We don't want a lot of LDLs and consequently an increased risk for developing cardiovascular disease, stroke, and other harmful long-term diseases. And then on the right, I have another diagram, and this is just explaining more about what type 2 diabetes is. So again, it's a condition that occurs when the body cannot properly process sugar into energy. Um, so either your body's failing to use insulin correctly or the pancreas is failing to make enough insulin. So symptoms of type 2 diabetes are going to include extreme thirst, um, feeling hungry even when you're eating, frequent urination, slow healing cuts, numbness in the hands or feet, or blurred vision. Um, obviously, it's going to be multisystemic, meaning that it's going to affect more parts of your body than just one. Um, so why is it dangerous? This high blood sugar, because the insulin is not allowing glucose to enter the cell, so it's saying in your blood sugar resulting in a high blood sugar. Um, it can lead to stroke, increased risk of heart disease or heart failure. It can threaten your vision, limbs, and extremities, and other problems. So this is like a very serious disease, especially in the United States. It's getting worse with every year. Um, so you really have to be aware of this, and that's why trying to lower your genetic susceptibility, especially through easy things like diet, is very important and something that research is increasingly looking at. So how can a high protein diet affect a person's susceptibility to developing type 2 diabetes? High protein diets have been shown to positively impact several genetic risk factors of type 2 diabetes, such as high blood pressure, obesity, and inconsistent glycemic regulation. So the primary way that a high protein diet is going to lower your susceptibility is by targeting not um, the actual manifestation of the type 2 diabetes in your body, but actually the risk factors that are increasing your risk of developing it. So for the risk factor of obesity, high protein diets can assist with weight loss um, because they have been shown to promote satiety through increases in increases in anorexigenic and decreases in anorexigenic hormones. Um, also, high-protein diets can improve your insulin sensitivity, which we talked about earlier. Um, your resistance or your insensitivity to insulin is what causes type 2 diabetes um, because high-protein diets can significantly decrease glycated HbA1c levels. And then high blood pressure, which is a risk factor for type 2 diabetes. Um, high protein diets can result in net decreases in systolic and diastolic blood pressure, aka lowering your blood pressure. So the research articles that I looked at, there was one that looked at um, high blood pressure. So one study analyzing blood pressure in individuals with a high genetic susceptibility for type 2 diabetes found that those individuals placed on a high-protein diet experienced greater, decrease, greater decreases in systolic blood pressure, thereby effectively controlling hypertension and reducing their likelihood of developing type 2 diabetes. And then another article I looked at looked at one of the non-modifiable non risk factors, um, which was actually looking at your ethnicity, um, which obviously you can't control. So... This study um, found that specifically white patients with higher genetic susceptibilities for developing type 2 diabetes had greater decreases in fasting insulin on a high-protein diet. So that study found that a higher-protein diet in white individuals with higher genetic susceptibilities was effective in, in improving their insulin resistance and beta cell function. And then the other study I looked at just looked at specifically the type of protein that we're consuming. And so that found that a lower dietary intake 
of plant protein in Asian Indian adults was correlated with a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So this suggests that maybe instead of just looking at higher protein in general, looking at a higher protein intake of specifically plant protein would be more effective in reducing your risk for developing type 2 diabetes. So my conclusion and recommendations, um, obviously more research is needed to investigate the advantages of a high protein diet on genetic susceptibility to type 2 diabetes. Um, more research is always good in any case. Um, however, I mean, as we talked about earlier, protein can aid in muscle recovery, building lean muscle, weight maintenance, curbing hunger, and many other benefits. So overall, I would recommend adding more protein to every meal for any individual not just those with a high risk for type 2 diabetes, because protein does serve many other functions. Um, so no matter what, getting more in is always going to be a benefit. It's not going to hurt you. And then living a healthier lifestyle in general and maintaining a healthy diet is crucial in reducing your risk of developing type 2 diabetes and any other disease for that matter. And these are my references. Um, thank you, everybody.